Hey everyone, Wazoo here with another little tutorial today and we are going to be discussing the new changes to Spring Security 6.0. Yeah, with the latest update of Spring Boot to 3.0, uh, the Spring Security team has released the version 6 of their of the, the Spring Security framework to go alongside the new changes with Spring Boot 3. So as you can see on docs.spring.io, we've got a documentation page here by the Spring Security team, and they've got a very handy dandy what's new section. So we won't be going through every item in this uh, line by line, but I think this is a good page to go through if you are in the process of migrating your project from Spring Boot 2, which is uh, using Spring Security 5. And so this will document and highlight the new changes that you'll need to make to your project to go along with the version update. So the biggest one, of course, is the default requirement of the JDK 17, which is what the team settled on for the Spring Framework updates in general. So to sort of demonstrate some of these new changes, uh, as you can see here, there I'm scrolling through which uh, scrolling through the page here, which lists the, the major changes that the team has made, depending on what you've been using in the older versions of Spring Security. So let's go ahead and go to start.spring.io and let's create a really small project to just go through some of these changes and highlight the differences with Spring Security 6. So first off, we'll use, uh, we'll use a Maven project, Java 3.00. We'll leave everything else at default, and uh, we'll be using a jar file uh, using Java 17 by default. And let's just add Spring Web and Spring Security. And let's go ahead and hit the Generate button and download the zip file, place it wherever you want on your hard drive. And then once you extract it, let's go ahead and open it in your favorite editor. You can use, of course, whatever you want. This time, I'm going to be using IntelliJ. Okay, so here we are with the project open. Hopefully, the font size isn't too ridiculous. I'm having a troublesome time sometimes with the, the way that uh, text and fonts in general get uh, visualized when it's recorded and put up on YouTube. It seems to always be a lot smaller than it appears locally. Anyways. So we've got our default project here set up with Spring Security 6 and Spring Boot 3. If we run it, we'll just have the similar uh, behavior that we've seen for all of our Spring Boot projects. And uh, you'll notice, again, uh, Spring Security will have this uh, randomly generated password that's showing up in the log file here. I'll show you in a minute what we're going to be using that for. But by default, a any request that we make to the uh, to the local server, let's just demonstrate that. Any request will be met with a login prompt. As by default, Spring Security locks everything down. So this hasn't changed much from earlier versions of Spring Security. Okay, so let's first go ahead and create a controller. So let's go back into IntelliJ here. And let's go ahead and stop that server. And similar to what we've done in the past before, let's go into the uh, root package here. I'll just expand that open here. Let's create a new package. We'll just call it controllers. And we'll call our Java class maybe hello controller. Pretty basic. And We'll give this annotation of a REST controller. Okay, and then what we'll do here is we'll create a get mapping for slash welcome, or how about hello? And so we'll return a simple string. Hey there. So let's go ahead and run that now. And let's refresh our page. So we want to go directly to the, let's go to the hello endpoint and we're met with the familiar login form. So let's, the, the default username is just called user. 
And then the password is what is coming out in that randomly generated string in the log. So let's go ahead and we'll go into the log there and we'll cut and paste the password from here. It'll be different for you, of course. Uh, it's randomly generated on each startup. Uh, just so you don't accidentally release something into production that everyone can access uh, online. So let's paste that in here and we get our uh, hey there response from the REST controller. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now let's go ahead and demonstrate the Spring Security 6 changes. So in our back in our main package here, let's go ahead and create a new one and just call it config, which is what I've tended to do to stick all of my configuration files. And we'll call this one security config. Now, Spring Boot 6 is uh, just like most of Java, uh, the, most of the Spring Framework, sorry, is trying to move towards a more component-based architecture. So uh, in the past, if you remember in Spring Security 5, you could extend the class your security configuration could extend the web web security configurer adapter. And notice how it's not even showing up in the uh, IntelliSense anymore in your IDE. Uh, they've in the past it was deprecated in Spring Security Five. It was deprecated, so you could at least use it, but it had a big line through it just to signal that it was going to be removed. So now it's officially removed from Spring Security Six. You won't be able to use it anymore. Instead, what you'll have to do is use the um, enable web security annotation. And then what you'll also need to do is use the configuration annotation as well to go alongside that. And then what we'll do is we will create a bean and we will call it um, and all this bean needs to do is return a security filter chain. So we can say security filter chain. That's what we're returning. And we can name this method whatever we want. I'll just call it security filter chain. And we, as a parameter, we're getting an HTTP security object. And we are returning an HTTP build, which then an exception needs to be handled, so just allow uh, allow this, the, the function to throw an exception. So let's further go into this. Uh, what we can make use of now is a, uh, in the past, uh, we used to use authorize, um, authorize requests. That was a, a method from uh, Spring Security 5. And you'll notice now that if you try and use authorized requests, there'll be a, a line through it, which is signaling again that it's going to be deprecated and eventually removed. So you'll want to get off of that and make use of the H authorized HTTP requests handler instead. And this is a Lambda function. So what we can do is authorize HTTP requests and create this as a Lambda function. Yeah. So what we're going to do now is we are going to just authenticate every request. So any request will go through our authenticated. And the way we want to authenticate our request is just with the standard form login. And what we'll use here for now is customizer with defaults. So all of the defaults for form the form login method. So we've got a default form login uh, using all the defaults and w which is the way we are authorizing or w the way we are um, handling authentication with our application slash endpoints. So first uh, what we want to do is we want to bypass any authentication for that hello uh, controller. So let's do auth and you'll notice in the past or not you'll notice but remember in the past with Spring Security 5 you would be using a like an ant matcher with your path or a MVC matcher and you can tell right away that it is no longer coming up in your IntelliSense either meaning that it's been removed. 
And so on Spring Security 6, the way to handle this is with the use of a request matchers. So let's set up a request matcher to the hello path and we just want to permit everyone. So permit all. So it'll skip, it'll bypass the authentication for the slash hello endpoint. So let's go ahead and start that up again. HTTPS localhost 8080 slash hello. And we get hello there. So we've bypassed our authentication. And then if we try and go into, let's say, slash foo, we get challenged with our login form. And so if we enter that uh, username of user with a default password, we'll get that, uh, we'll just get the white label error, error page because we are not really defining anything else. We don't have a foo controller to handle that request. So another thing we can do is, or another thing to look at here is the actual form itself. So if we do a uh, inspect of this HTML form, we can take a look at what Spring Security provides by default. I believe most of this was used in Spring Security 5 as well, but just this is a good refresher if you haven't uh, poked around with the, the form there at all. So you'll notice uh, if we open up the HTML for this form, you'll notice that uh, it's posting our login credentials to the slash login action. And then it has a uh, username, a default username field named username and a default password field with the name password. And then the form also provides a CR CSRF token, which is a cross cross-site request forgery prevention token. This is, a, if you haven't used CSRF before, it's a mechanism uh, which is common for many web applications. And what happens is the server generates, when the, when the server wants to present a form, a login form, for example, to the, to the user, to the browser, then it'll generate this token, CSRF token, and it'll then include it in the in the front end in the the form here, and then the idea is that when you uh, submit the form data back to the server, this token is included with the submission, and then the server server will match them up and either reject your form post um, if the if the to if it doesn't recognize the token, or it'll let it'll let it through and uh, process the request as normal. Uh, it's just one element of web security. All right, so what we can do is uh, we can make some of these changes. Let's say you've created your own custom login form that you want to use. And so there's a way to override a lot of the defaults, um, or all the defaults, sorry, that show up in the form security of. So let's go back and let's stop the server and let's just comment out this form login here. And so this is a another Lambda function. So we can open this up with uh, an arrow here. And so what we want to do is let's, let's rename that username parameter to be custom, whoops, custom underscore username. Rename that uh, default password parameter name to be custom password. I don't know why I want to say customer all the time. Okay, custom password. Start that up again. And then if we refresh the page, you will see if you expand into the form, you will see that the the field is now called, the name is now called custom username and custom password, which is what would get sent back into the login processing action, which is slash login. So let's go ahead and change that. Let's say that you've got a, um, in your server, you've got a different different mechanism for logging in. Let's say it's slash API slash login, for example. So let's go back into our configuration here. Let's go ahead and stop that. And what we'll do is we'll use the login form dot login processing URL. And let's just call it we can just call it custom login, a custom login method. Um, but this is what, whoops, this is what we want to define our action to 
uh, for that form. So let's go ahead and restart it and refresh this login form. And you can see that our form action name or form action path has now been updated to slash custom login. This was a nice and short video about Spring Security, some of the changes that are new in Spring Security 6. Uh, not so many major, well, okay, there's, there's quite a few major changes, but at the same time, it doesn't mean reworking your entire app, uh, but it does mean a few changes to the way URLs are um, secured and handled in the uh, security configuration, but it gives you a it gives you the option now of uh, moving towards a more component based uh, configuration in your your own application. So I hope you enjoyed this short video today. Give it a thumb and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more like this. And we'll see you in the next one. Have a good day wherever you are. Peace.